Today, we're unboxing the Elogu Centuri Carbon, the Core XY 3D printer that marks Elogu's bold leap into high speed printing with Clipper out of the box. Right away, I'm opening things up with my trusty Outdoor Edge Slide Winder. If you caught the review video I did on that, you know it's a pocket sized powerhouse. As we get inside the box, the first thing we find is the user manual. Elegoo's included a full color guide that actually well laid out. Easy to follow and surprisingly thorough for a budget friendly machine. Resting right on top of the packing foam is the glass lid for the enclosure. It's clean, solid, and honestly a nice touch. The full enclosure helps maintain stable temperatures during prints and is great for containing heat with materials like ABS. Now with the top foam removed, we get our first look inside the box. Everything is nestled in tight. Elegoo does a great job protecting the machine for shipping. Dense foam all around, no wiggle room at all. To get the printer out, I have to lay it on its back and gently pull the unit out by the plastic wrap while sliding the box away. This technique works way better than lifting it vertically. The Elegoo Centuri Carbon runs clipper firmware out of the box, which means faster print speeds and advanced features like input shaping and pressure advanced, all without any firmware flashing. It's a serious step up from traditional Marlin based machines. Now that it's free, we can stand it upright and get a better look. Elegoo first made waves in the resin printing world with their Mars series printers. But the Centuri Carbon marks their push into the high speed FDM printing. With a Core XY motion system and a solid all metal frame, it's built for both speed and precision. Time to remove the plastic wrap using the slide winder again. And as always, slice away from your fingers, folks. The Centuri Carbon features a Core XY motion system paired with linear rails on the X and Y axis for ultra smooth, high speed movement. It also comes equipped with an all metal hot end capable of reaching 300 degrees Celsius, making it compatible with a wide range of filaments, from your standard PLA to advanced materials like. PETG, ABS, and even some nylons. Next, I pull out the internal foam inserts from the top and lift out the toolbox. This has all of our cables, tools, and accessories. Inside the box, a power cord, check a bag full of tools, and a roll of test filament, check. We also got the side mounted spool holder and the touchscreen we will install shortly. Going deeper into the tool bag, a small coil of PLA filament, keys, scraper blades, clog removal rods, a tube of lead screw grease, and a glue stick for the build plate. a replacement nozzle wipe, and a USB drive with files already preloaded. Back to the printer itself. I removed the last bits of packing foam from inside the frame. Now 
Then I peel off the cling film from the front door and remove the tape holding the ribbon cable for the touchscreen. Now, using some clippers, I cut the zip tie holding the cardboard spacer around the print head. Just another shipping safety precaution by Elegoo. One of the biggest strengths behind Elegoo printers is the community. Whether you're troubleshooting, tuning slicer profiles, or just showing off prints, there's an active group of users on Reddit, Discord, and on Facebook. It's a solid support system especially helpful if you're new to Clipper or Core XY printers. Let's take a closer look at the user guide and user manual. I flip through and point out each section, the setup, firmware, maintenance. It's a solid manual that doesn't feel like an afterthought. Time to attach the spool holder. This clips into the side of the enclosure frame with a little bit of a twist and stays surprisingly secure. I lay the printer on its back again to install the touchscreen. First, you need to attach the ribbon cable. The Centuri Carbon's 5 inch capacity touchscreen runs a fluid clipper based interface giving you a real-time print tuning, easy mesh leveling, and detailed printer diagnostics. It's intuitive, fast, and feels more like a modern tablet than a traditional 3D printer screen. Then slide the screen down into the mounting slots on the front panel. Power cord goes in, and I also want to point out that on this particular model, it does not have the AMS port. That means this is the Gen 1 version of the Centauri Carbon. No multicolor printing option, at least not yet. Next, I peel off the protective film from the glass lid and place it onto the printer. The Centuri Carbon features fully automatic bed leveling with a high resolution sensor that probes 81 points across the build plate. Combine that with a dual fan, part cooling setup, and a dedicated hot end fan, and you get clean overhangs, crisp details, and a reliable first layer. Don't forget to remove the cling wrap from the touchscreen too. Feels good, right? Now, let's get some filament ready. I open up a spool of black Sunlu PLA Plus. Sunlu PLA Plus has been my go-to FDM filament for many years now. The Sunlu PLA Plus is a fan favorite for a reason. It's affordable, prints reliably, and has just the right amount of flex to resist cracking. Layer adhesion is solid and surface finish is smooth and it handles bridging and an overhang surprisingly well for a budget filament. The spool goes onto the holder we installed earlier and powering on the unit for the first time. Zooming in the setup wizard launches immediately. I choose English, and then the next prompt tells us to remove the three screws that hold the build plate in place during shipping. 
Zooming back out, I grab the included Allen wrench and get ready to remove those screws. Here's a close-up of each screw's location inside the printer. They are easily identified by the red stickers. Speeding things up a bit here while I unscrew all three. You get the idea. Back to the touchscreen, confirming that the screws are all out and that the interior is clear. There's also a small tag on the bottom of the build plate to remove. Done. Now I hit Begin Self-Check on the touchscreen. The printer starts its self-diagnostic process, heating the nozzle and bed, checking the hot end fan, the mainboard fan, running input shaping, and finally automatic bed leveling. Input shaping is key to the printer's speed. It cancels out vibrations caused by fast movements resulting in sharper prints even at high speeds. Uh-oh, wait a sec. I spot a piece of packing foam still stuck in the back near the filament exit chute. I reach in to grab it. You should definitely remove all foam before powering up. And seriously, don't reach inside the printer while it's running. It's risky for the machine and for you. Back to leveling. The Centauri probes the bed at 81 points. Yes, really and it checks some of those spots two to five times depending on surface variance. Elegoo provides its own slicing software called Elegoo Slicer, which I will have a video on later. But the Centauri Carbon is also fully compatible with popular third-party slicers like Orca Slicer and Kira. That means you're not locked into a single ecosystem. Now that the self-check is complete, I tap confirm on the screen and start exploring the menu. The Centauri offers a large build volume of 256 by 256 by 256. But if you were like me, you were hoping that when announced it would have the larger build plate, something maybe larger than the X1C, and who knows, maybe that's yet to come. Let's load some filament. I trim the end of the Sunlu PLA Plus, straighten it a bit, and start feeding it into the filament sensor above the spool holder. According to Elegoo, you should feed from the bottom of the spool, so I flip it around to do just that. Notice the blue light on the filament sensor turns on. This means the filament is detected. Push it in firmly until you feel it click into place. Sometimes it catches just before it reaches the extruder.
On the screen, I hit load filament to start the process. Zooming out, you can see the printer pull the filament in. I speed this part up to keep things moving along. The filament is loaded and the screen confirms it. Time to print. I open the files folder on the touchscreen and start a benchy. Zooming out again, as the printer lays down the first layers, everything looks smooth and well calibrated. And finally, here it is, my first benchy, complete. Now it's time for our bonus round. I've taken three Star Wars style restraining bolts that I printed for comparison. The first one I used Elegoo's default slicer profile. The second one I used my tuned Bamboo Studio profile for the X1 Carbon. And then the third, that one was dialed to the 0.12 millimeter layer height using the same bamboo settings. All right, time for final thoughts. The Centuri Carbon is dangerously close in quality to what I get from the X1C. If you squint, you may not see the difference. And if you don't squint, well, you still might not. I'm nitpicking here, and that's a good thing. I must say, I'm truly impressed with this printer. Thanks for joining me in this full unboxing and first print walkthrough of the Elegoo Centuri Carbon. Stay tuned to this channel for an Elegoo Slicer review where I will walk you through setting up the Elegoo Slicer and fine tuning the settings for getting the best prints out of the Centauri Carbon that you possibly can. This has been your captain speaking and I wanted to remind you to keep printing tomorrow today.